thank you, Jenny. Jenny is that designer co-founder that I partnered with, so I'm very lucky in that regard. Um, I, there is a lot of talk. I feel like the, the conversation about the role of design in the creation of technology experiences has uh, changed a lot in the last decade, where people are talking about it all the time, where, I mean, look at all these people in the room, these smart, talented folks who care passionately and deeply about this, and it's great. Um, but I also feel like, um, well, there is an opportunity to raise the bar in terms of the type of interaction, the type of discussion that we have. So I will speak generally, mostly to folks who are not designers today, but a little bit to designers. And I'm sure that none of this applies to all the people in the room who've already raised the bar and are already just kicking ass at state-of-the-art levels. So I'll just set your expectations that way. But when I look at folks who are not designers and who say that they want designed to have a role in their organization, on their team, in their product. They say, yeah, man, I'm smart. I know what it's all about. I'm going to get me some designers. And I say, well, do these people really understand design? And I think the answer is typically no. And do they have taste? I think the answer is, is typically no. I mean, this guy, you know, it's mostly about what they like. I know what I like. I can have an opinion on everything you draw. I know what I like. This guy, you know, he's got that streamlined look. He's got that nice black shirt. He knows what he likes, right? What this guy likes? Pontiac Aztec. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Stylin'. <laughs> Look at that. He's meditating with that thing. <laughs> Sorry for all the pixelation, but this picture is too good not to show. <laughs> it, it, his Pontiac Aztec calms him. Ah, now I am sitting next to my perfectly designed car. This, this car reminds me of the Homer. Have you ever seen the Homer? The car that Homer Simpson designed with the... Uh, it had like an offshoot out the back with a bubble, a mother-in-law bubble. <laughs> It bankrupted Homer's long lost brother. So uh, these non-designer folks are saying, what, what are you saying, man? You're saying I'm not smart? No, you're smart. You're saying I'm not a designer? You don't, I don't really understand design? Well, yeah. You're saying I have no taste? Probably, probably. And you say, well, what do you, what, I, I, I like design, though, and I like working with designers, and I, I, I want creativity on my team, and I recognize creativity, and I welcome and embrace creativity. I know that a lot of that will come from having some of those designer folks on my team. Well, turns out, uh, you, you don't like creativity at all, in fact. Uh, and uh, I, I don't like to read from, from uh, slides, but this is too good. So this is this Cornell study. Creative ideas are by definition novel. and. Novelty can trigger feelings of uncertainty, make most people uncomfortable. Not all, not all. I'm sure I'm not talking, whoever's getting upset in the room, you are the exception. I promise. <laughs> Just trust me. I'm not talking to you. Everyone around you, though. They dismiss creative ideas in favor of ideas that are purely practical. You may have noticed this in our politics lately. Uh, objective evidence doesn't help. So actually, I heard someone say, designers just got to, they got to learn how to prove their points. They got to learn how to bring the data. It doesn't matter anyway. Don't even bother because no one's going to listen. And uh, people don't even recognize they're against it. They did this uh, cool way to test. I don't, I'm not smart enough to understand it, but it's, it's a way they test for things like um, uh, uh, people's racist tendencies, like just stuff people aren't going to say, oh, why, yes, I'm a bigot. So um, uh, but Brian, please don't edit that one <laughs> snippet. Do you know what I'm saying? OK. That was a, a character I do. Uh, so they, 
The results of these special tests revealed that they actually associated creative ideas with words such as vomit, poison, and agony. And you're lucky. I, uh, um, I had a lot worse slides to choose from <laughs> to illustrate this point, and I just gave you the pumpkin. So doing you a favor. Um, engineers, technologists, people who are passionate about technology and have a role in creating it, believe often, often, there's my qualifier, that anything can be reduced to the same methodologies and techniques they use to uh, 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 execute their craft, which is you know, writing software, creating hardware, whatever it happens to be. Uh, so the perfect example is cooking for engineers, which I adore, that has reduced all cooking of food into these handy charts. And I'm sure that this will make everything taste great. <coughs> and then if I don't think their food tastes great, they will come to me and say, well, prove it. Where's your data? I'll be like, well, I have a palate. I needed a little more evidence for this point, and I couldn't have found anyone better than Mark Miller. In this podcast, Mark Miller will show you how it's done. Because good user interface design can be done by sticking to some good rules and avoiding some common mistakes. You don't need to be a latte sipping, tattoo wearing, MacBook carrying designer to create user interfaces that work. And apparently, you don't need apostrophes either. <laughs> And you know, I, I, saw, you know I, was, I scoured the internet, scoured for screenshots of either Code Rush for Delphi or the CDK or XL8 or any of the crap this guy made, desperate to show you what he thinks is good UI, but I couldn't find anything. Um, but the truth is, he's not wrong. Sure, you're right. OK, you can create some good user interfaces that work. But I don't think that's why you're all here. You're here to make products that uh, sing, products that create an emotional reaction in the customer where they want to come back again and again and again. So um, I feel like designers in uh, uh, business and, and especially in our industry, in, in businesses in our industry, they get sucked into this vortex of trying to justify what they do. And I think it's a waste of time. Uh, and so I will blaspheme now. And I will say that um, creating the design for a product, creating a product experience, is an opinion. It's just an opinion. It's an opinion of what kind of emotional reaction and experience you want the user to have when they use the product. We have a premise. We cannot prove it. It is based on a whole variety of inputs, technical capabilities, funding, business goals, customer data, whatever it happens to be. But ultimately, what it boils down to, when you bring a designer into your organization, they are giving you an opinion. And to waste time with them trying to prove that it is exactly the right opinion is, um, well, it, it's a waste of time. Uh, and it's not only important that they have the opportunity to give that opinion, but that the organization execute on that opinion and then see the results and then loop back and adjust. And those iterative loops are what design is about. We start with premise. We have an opinion on how to articulate that, how to achieve that, how to create that emotional reaction to customers. And then we see what actually happens. We are arrogant while we develop it, and then we do a 180 the day it ships, and we become humble. And we listen, listen, listen. So OK, you're not one of the designers. And you say, OK, I, I got it. I got it. I'm going to go get me some good software designers. I'm going to bring them onto my team. I'm going to give them some important, juicy stuff to do. Well. The problem is, 
and this is not, well, it is your problem, but now I, I challenge the, the designers in the room. When you go to pick your designer, not all designers are software designers. And not all software designers are great software designers. Because, and this doesn't mean that they couldn't be great, and this doesn't mean they're not good at what they do. It's just, to me, just my opinion. A great software designer is, is a singer and a songwriter. This is someone who can both compose the music and get up on stage and give the performance of a lifetime. This is someone who, this is not to, to disrespect the quality of work that someone is doing in a specialized fashion. But I do believe in the world of software design where we have divided up the role of the designer into, well, I will do the wireframes, and I will architect the information, and I will go test it with customers, and I will put some visuals on here, which are uh, come from the brand people, and pop, 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 pop. I'm like, come on. Like, those things are interconnected at a deep level. And it doesn't mean everyone is going to be great at every single thing. But if you are a designer, and you are good at one, and have work to do on the other, do the work. Because all together, too often, what I find is that there are people who are making excuses for, oh, I, I don't do that. I've seen, I'm sure it's no one in here. I'm sure it's, it's that guy right there. But it's none of you. People denigrate the thing that they don't do. Insecurity? I don't know. Just like, oh, well, this, uh, it, when I got to Microsoft, the designers were all like, interaction design, very important, visual design, oh, who cares? It, it showed in the product. It showed. And also, they weren't good visual designers. So it was convenient. And they were insecure about it, too, because the developers would come and say, oh, can you pretty this up? That's not what I do. I create architecture. I engineer designs. I, all this words and stuff. A lot of words. <laughs> Too many words. This guy, Michelangelo, he would have been incredible. He was an incredible software designer, right? He was engineering and architecting physical structures, hardware, and then he'd paint the shit out of those things. And where do you think designers get this sense of insecurity? Well, it starts early. It starts at these design schools. I wonder where they get the idea that like, they need to be engineers. Thank you, SCAD. <laughs> I would claim it's a really unfortunate acronym that I wouldn't use. <laughs> SCAD alumni are in demand as professionals with triple threat credentials as artists, designers, and programmers. Hey, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, <laughs> and of course, our industry perpetuates this. Thank you, Jared Spool. Lovely guy. He's not even really perpetuating. He's just reporting on what's happening. And what's happening? What does is, what is Jared inform us? Well, you see, startups are really constrained for resources. So of course they want designers who can also code. And I say, well, startups are really stupid. <laughs> so of course they would take a designer who can add all this value to their product and waste their fucking time writing code. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> it makes me crazy. If the person running the company understood the real value of what the designer could contribute and had been fortunate enough to find someone who performed at that level, then they would understand that it's not about whether the designer can code. Sure, design, a, a great software designer should have, uh, yeah, I'm going to ignore that, should have, should have uh, a passion for technology and uh, empathy for the development process and sure, you got some skit and understand how software works, just like a great print designer understands the, the paper and ink and how they combine on the press and how to balance that with the cost of how that much that annual report's supposed to actually cost and what our budget is and all these things. But just because they understand that doesn't mean they're a press operator. It's like saying I'm only gonna hire, I'm a publishing house and I'm only gonna hire authors who can also bind books. <laughs> like it's insanity. And of course, 
the designers get all insecure. And so instead of focusing on being well-rounded software designers, right, like I said, they wrap up everything they're doing in like engineering terms, right? Or you even take, and again, no disrespect because you can come from anywhere and be a great designer. But a lot of times I've seen you get some engineer or program manager type who has real excitement about the design process and wants to do it. Has no training in that regard, by the way. Not that there's only one way, but they really often have no training. And they come in and use their engineering street cred to validate their, hey, and now I'm the, I'm the user experience guy. And uh, then they kind of bring in you know, some visual designers to, to, to pretty up their, their pig. And of course, the, the business folks and the engineering folks are like, well, can you prove to me which of these is the best choice? How come you picked that one? What about these others? I like that one. And again, now, large companies are big by definition. They have um, a lot of different places. And one example is not necessarily representative of the whole company. So Google, I will pick on you briefly. And just caveat that I'm sure, and I, this is a couple of years ago, and everyone's probably seen this, but I mean, I can't help it. So team at Google couldn't decide between two blues, so they're testing 41 shades between. I had a recent debate over, with a developer over whether a border should be three, four, or five pixels wide and was asked to prove my case. I can't operate in an environment like that. And some of you, not all I'm sure, but some of you non-design folks may be unwittingly, or wittingly, is that the opposite of unwittingly? I don't know. You may be creating an environment like that just by trying to be responsible, trying to do the right thing, trying to you know, be able to defend your choices. But you can't because remember, it's an opinion. OK, I'm wrapping up. So there's one more thing. So you're like, OK, I get it. I get it. I, I'm, I'm going to let them do their thing. I, we, need, we need design. We need to be the design. We need, we need to be. We need to be like Apple. We need to be like Apple. You know what we need to do? We need, we need our own, oh yeah, we need Steve. In fact, we're going to get Steve. Like, the, the guy, we're going to get someone that's going to be our Steve Jobs, going to come in, going to run things, going to make it all happen. We're gonna, it's going to be great. We're going to have design in everything that we do. And in fact, yeah, we're going to go get uh, designers, and uh, they're going to have these fancy glasses that they wear, uh, weird colors, and they're going to put up a bunch of type posters up on the wall and uh, bring in like shit ton of Apple hardware and uh, they're going to sit in these really fucking expensive chairs and, and we're going to do it. We're doing the whole thing. Here we go. And we're going to end up with this. And we're going to pat ourselves on the back and look at how great it is. And you, you won't be able to tell the difference that it's not that because you think you made that, but you made this. You can't even tell the fucking difference. And that's the problem. And the, the reason that this works, it's not because he's you know, great. It's not because he understands design. It's, it's because he's also the boss. It's because he has the ability to make sure every single detail, down to the last pixel, down to the way they answer their phone, fits within that opinion. It's an opinion. If you want to go through the trouble to find a good software designer, I'm, I'm rapping. This is my moment. Don't break my emotional moment. Here. No, I'm just kidding. Um, if you want to go through the effort to make your product stand out, to make it be distinct, and you think you have half a chance of finding a real, well-rounded software designer, don't bother unless you are going to put them in a position where they have real power and real control over engineering decisions, features, dates, all of it. 
doesn't necessarily mean they have to be the CEO. But you have to have this, this person, these people, have their opinion carry the day. Because that's what we're all trying to make together. And if you don't, just don't even bother. Just don't waste their time. And if you're a designer and you are fortunate enough to be in one of these situations, then keep focusing on making yourself better and well-rounded and a stellar example of the kind of designer, not who goes and writes code, but the type of designer who integrates with the business in a coherent way and leads. Not just sits there and is like, ah, no one will listen to me. Meh. Make yourself great and lead. That's it. Thank you.